Hello there. How are you today? I'm hanging out in fairy world with Zing. I always get this backwards. <laughs> and we are going to talk about fairies today. Do you believe in fairies out there? Well, some may and some may not. But I think after listening to Zing today talk about her fairy wisdom, you might just change your mind a little bit. Zing Nafzinga is a creator who manifests human miracles. Wouldn't we all like a few of those, okay? But she does it with her earth partnership. And today we're going to talk about that and how she evolved her story through this partnership. So come on and say hi. Zing, thank you for being here so much today to talk about your fairy stories that walk us across the bridge. This is your proof copy in case anybody was wondering what that is. This is a proof copy and we are in the final phases of sprucing this up. So thanks for coming on this morning. Thank you. So, you know, we were chatting a little bit earlier about, you know, this whole realm that you access. And I, you know, it's a lot of people might think it's just all fantasy. But after speaking to you and working with you, it's a little bit more than just fantasy, although we have to use our imagination sometimes, right, to connect with these realms. So tell our audience out there who's watching you today, how did this come to be? How did you, I know you had a connection with angels, but how did you come to connect with fairies? Fairies wasn't a realm or an energy uh, or a topic that I was particularly interested in, except as a child when I was reading fairy stories. I always loved fairy stories. But as an adult, I was more interested in philosophical, spiritual um, connections with the universe. And I like being above the fray, above the, the natural world. Until one day I was in my dining room and my angel said, let's go to Goodwill. And I said, I don't need anything at Goodwill. And they said, let's go to Goodwill. So I went to Goodwill and they took me to the book section and I put out my hand and the book that they led me to, I pulled it out and looked at it. And it said, how to communicate with nature spirits, with the elementals. And I thought, okay, it's time. My angels want me to learn how to communicate with this fairy energy. You know, so I, I wonder how many times, I'm going to just intervene here a little bit because I could relate to what you're saying. I wonder how many times that we, you listening, have gotten signs, but because you don't believe in it yet, you don't really follow it. And so you just ignore it. And I'm sure that has happened I know it's happened to me years ago. I'm sure it's happened to Zing. She just said, you know, she wasn't always ready for it until that day. So what shifted for you once you started to read about this, this elemental forces? Of course, the first thought is always, why are they going to talk to me? Like, am I going to be able to hear it? Am I going to be able to communicate? Um uh, Am I important enough for the fairies to actually want to talk to me? Good questions. I love that. Because, you know, Zing, that's a lot of times when people are coming up with an idea or they want to write a book or they're doing an essay, whatever it is, they're afraid to put it out there, too, for those same reasons. Am I good enough? Who am I? So I think that's a really good lead into this, this story that takes us on a journey. Let's find out more. So, Zing, when they started talking to you, what was like some of the first things that happened? Well, I want to move back just a bit and state what I had to do in order to start the process. I had to trust that in the flow, trust that whatever was meant to be was going to happen and be open to it. So each day I would meditate and put it in there an invitation to the fairies to say, I am ready. I'm going to listen with my psychic ears. I'm going to keep my my eyes open. I'm going to play my part in this communication adventure. And then I had to trust. Just several days went by. I put my invitation, set my intention every day. And then a few days later, I was in the car driving my mother back from some event we had att attended. And I heard a voice coming from the back seat, a psychic voice as clear as could be, say, 
something to the effect of, we think you should dig up your yard so that you can fertilize it better. <laughs> so is that how you learned how to be a better gardener and got involved in permaculture through the fairies? <laughs> yes. Yes. I knew about gardening, but they started communicating about things that I could do in my own backyard to make a difference, to be more in balance and harmony with the way that nature works. So how long did you communicate with them before you had the idea to bring their wisdom into a book? I think I've been communicating with them for five years or so, I think, because when we, when they started giving me instruction on the gardening work and I agreed to be in partnership and practice what they were teaching. It was a learning process to get the alignment between their energy and my energy um, to get it into sync. At first they would give me instructions visually, a picture, and I would see what it is they intended me to do. And then sometimes they would give it to me auditorily orally um, and I would hear what it was they wanted me to do and sometimes I, it would just be a feeling a knowing so I I needed to learn how to um, how the communication process was going to work and then let's see what happened next then there was a an opportunity that came up where there was a, a horticultural center that needed help um, restoring it itself. And I was asked to come in and help with that process. So I communicated with the fairies and said, will you help if I take on this project? And they said, we will be there um, for whoever wants to learn to communicate with the fairies while you are restoring this horticultural center. So, so I'm wondering, was, we've got we've got some people listening right now. I'm wondering how many of you out there get signs, get feelings, get information, but perhaps you don't trust it just yet because it's different. It's a new paradigm. It's not something you were taught or maybe believed in until the knock, knock, knock kept coming, like in Zing's case. So if you have a question or a comment or want to share a little bit, please do down below, okay? And if you have questions, Zing and or I will answer them for you. So Zing, let's move forward a little bit because um, I know there's a lot of information in your book. I know you got wonderful stories. What was your intent in writing this book? Uh, during COVID, we needed to stay in and be more insular in how we were leading our lives. And I like being nourished by spiritual wisdom, insights from other people, mostly from books. And so having that uh, insulation, isolation from the outer world, every night I would go to bed and I'd say, I sure wish I had the perfect book to read that would just help me go off to sleep nicely, restore my faith in my alignment with the universe and, uh, and be a magical, delightful um, enhancement to my imagination as well. And I thought, well, if I don't have that book, maybe I should think about writing it. Exactly. How many times have you thought that out there? I should write a book or somebody tells you, you should write a book, right? And, and, and Zing took that opportunity. Zing, I don't know if you know, or those listening knew, but there have been since COVID, since these last two years of this pandemic, more writers than ever because now they had time. Actually, the numbers like through Amazon, like have gone so high where maybe you were in a sea of 15 million and now you're in a sea of 22 million just because people started writing their insights down, which is a great thing. It's like finally the time and the ambition to do it. So Zing, we were talking about some of your characters, and I know that the information comes in through a frequency or a thought. That's how we, we translated it for the human mind. So let's talk about that a little bit. So those out there that are considering writing a book or wondering when they pick up a copy of yours when it gets released, like how did she come up with this? How did you create your characters? There's a difference between communicating with the spiritual world, which is invisible, and 
transmitting it on a human plane uh, where everything has a form. So that's the process I needed to follow. I needed to take the, the invisible that I was receiving, the messages I was receiving, the thought, and then decide what my intention was and what quality I wanted to portray and then find the words in my culture, my English language and culture that would as be the best metaphors for portraying that to anyone who would read that material. So that yeah. was the process I needed to go through. Um, to, yeah. yeah, it was a process. It was a process. So let's entertain our viewers. Who is a interesting character that you kind of fell in love with? I think one of my favorite characters is one that I call T, T-E-E, -E, an earth fairy. And he is so wise and so understanding and so loving and so much a good teacher for me. And when I first met that energy, it came in as an energy and I was dialoguing with the energy. Uh, and I, I like asking for them to give me a name that I can call that energy because human beings like anthropomorphizing energies. They like to give things names so they can communicate with them easier. They feel like there's a being there you can communicate with. So the name he gave me was Tawanachuk. Tawanachuk is an awesome name. I love the foreign sound to it. I love the, the yeah. It's sibilant because Unique. through you, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, but I needed a name that would be easier to to just easier to use. That's why we all have nicknames. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, how about the nickname of T? Just the T at the front of his name. And he said, okay, it'll be T, but T E E, because he said, I will be like a golf T for you. I will hold you stable when you need to keep your eye on the ball. Oh, I love it. That's really good because gosh knows when we're writing, sometimes we can get really distracted. We all need a tea. <laughs> and tea at that point was just a, an energy I was having a dialogue with. So now to put it into the book, to put make it a story, I needed to have the intention, the mission, the, the purpose for him and put that into a metaphor that others would be able to understand. So he's an earth fairy and he likes stones and minerals and can give teachings on that. So he's like a geologist. He's like a forest ranger. He's like uh, um, a guide out mm -hmm. in nature. So then what do we expect that kind of person, that kind of metaphor to wear? Well, then of course he's got hiking boots on, he's got a safari hat. He has so you really created a picture using all the parameters of observation, senses, and all to bring to your characters so that your reader feels like, I, I know T, he's my buddy now. A learning process for me, as it is for many writers, is to be able to bring your characters to life. You have an idea in your head and the idea, the thought needs to be dressed so that other people can see it and understand it and feel it in their heart. So what I was learning was all the different ways in which I could use writing techniques to bring this character to life on the printed page so that people would feel him in their presence and not just uh, me say, well, there was this energy called Tawanachuk and, and this is what he said, but now there's a process now there's a form. Now there's a whole character with a personality that people can read and understand and, and enjoy communicating with themselves. I've had several on my launch team say how marvelous it was to have these characters come to life in front of them. And then they started communicating with the character. Yeah. Which is yeah. awesome. Yeah. You know, and I think we'll all relate to a different character on some level. I love Celerine. Right, right. <laughs> and and yeah. then you have Cecil and you have um, uh, a leprechaun, right? Laddie the leprechaun Laddie and Annabelle. Leprechaun. So she has all these delightful characters for you to get in touch with and find the part of you that relates to the character. And Fairy Wisdom to Live By will be released later this month. 
And the energy and the frequency that Zing is actually talking about is a stream of consciousness where this all comes in, which leads us to where you can find Zing and me in February of 2022. We have a stream of consciousness retreat and conference coming up. And Zing, are you going to teach people anything there? I'm going to be one of the speakers about how to bring your characters to life. Yes, we are going to go through all that process that I went through to learn how to do what I'm presenting in the book. And I'm going to teach you those same techniques so that you make sure that you're bringing your characters to life as, as much as, as possible for your readers. So that and will be in Sedona in February. Yeah. And you're also going to be doing a little breakout session for those that are interested. If you heard Zing earlier, if you just came on, go back and listen to earlier. She was talking about how the fairy wisdom began to teach her more about permaculture and getting in touch with the elemental forces of nature. And Zing loves, I've seen them. I don't know if you've seen them, but she loves to create the mandala from all the earth elements. Are you going to be doing something around that to teach people how to pay attention to what's on the ground and what they could do with it? It's something I can't help doing wherever I go. So I am sure in Sedona, I will be looking for a good place where we, whoever wants to join me, can go out into nature, look for the natural items on the ground, tune into the fairy energies, our highest energies within our heart, and we will create circular forms representing the harmony of the universe out of what we find. And I guarantee it's going to be an amazing experience. I, I believe that. I, I could already envision all these beautiful mandala. So closing this up, what is your message to, or what is the fairy's message to the world? The fairy's message is that everything is a process of balance and harmony. Even what seems inharmonious at the time, by the end, as it swirls in the spiral of the galaxy, it will be back in harmony. That's what they say. And they say the more that you can practice bringing things into harmony right now in your life, the better we need it. you'll be <laughs> your future. You'll be yeah. allowing more harmony to come into it. Yeah, so, absolutely. And you know, there is awesome. so much going on. Trust we the all flow. Trust the flow, trust the chaos and create something new from it. And that is exactly what's happening for a lot of us. This is why we are being called. We're having this calling not only to perhaps write your story, but it's more about finding your voice, finding what your soul voice is about. And that's what we're going to be teaching over in Sedona, Arizona in February. So if you want information, go to the website. I will actually put it down here below. And while we're still here for a moment, if anybody does want to ask Zing any questions, um, be, you know, go ahead and do it. Or if you do it later on a replay, just hit pound replay and she will come back later and be sure to answer your questions. Because maybe you're curious how she got into that stream of consciousness. Maybe you're curious how she learned to trust Maybe you're curious about these mandala, okay? So, Zing, I want to thank you for being here today. It's a delightful, you know, moment to spend with you and find out more about the inner workings of your stream of consciousness and how you wrote Fairy Wisdom to Live By. Thank you, Gloria. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>